So the last thing we're going to be talking about is this idea of Hellenistic culture. So Hellenistic culture is what takes place after the rule of Alexander the Great. And basically, if you guys remember from the last notes, uh, when Alexander the Great's empire split, it split into like Egypt being ruled by Ptolemy, you have the Greek city-states of Macedonia, and then you have old Persia. However, they're still kind of all influenced by each other because they were all under the same ruler for that bit of time. And so Hellenistic culture is what we get when we blend those cultures together. So what is Hellenistic culture? It's the blending of Egyptian Persian and Indian influences. All right, so when you add all of these to the already established Greek culture, you get Hellenism or Hellenistic culture. All right, and this is something that is still a huge thing taught in those different areas because it's what made them prosperous at the time. And as we go through our things today, you will see that pretty much everything we talk about is a good, positive thing, art, architecture, academics, stuff like that. So it is a pretty big, um, important part of our history. And a lot of that kind of golden age of Athens that we talked about, those same kind of ideas of like, this is the best time for this, takes place again under the Hellenistic culture up until the time when the Roman Empire kind of flourishes and knocks out Greece a little bit. So of this time, one of the most Hellenistic cities is the city of Alexandria. And in the notes on Alexander the Great, we talked about how he created the city Alexandria in Egypt after he took over. And Alexandria became this hub of trade. And the reason for that is because it's on the mouth of the Nile. All right, so it's located on the Nile Delta. Which opens it for trade. So people from all over the world are going to stop through Alexandria in order to get to where they need to go. And so Alexandria becomes this hub of trade and ideas and influences and all this kind of stuff. And it's one of the most Hellenistic cities at the time. So during this time period, we have a lot of academic pieces that come about. So we talked about philosophy and we learned about um, like some of the architecture with Parthenon and things like that. This is more academic in terms of like STEM, math, science, that kind of stuff. And so the first one is astronomy. So Greek astronomy is actually way ahead of its time. Um, at the end of the year, close to the end of the year, we'll talk about the scientific revolution and how a lot of these ideas that the Greeks actually have at this point are now being kind of redone again way far couple thousand years later, okay? Um, so Greeks figured out by looking and everything, doing their astronomy thing, that the sun is at least 300 times larger than the world. It's a lot more than that, but it is at least 300 times larger than the world. Pretty much they figured that the sun is actually larger than Greece because before this, the common held belief is that Greece is really big and you look in the sky and you see a little sun, obviously Greece has to be bigger than the sun because the sun's way this big when you look at it. Obviously with distance and all that kind of stuff, um, that's when they kind of realize that, oh hey, the sun is actually larger than Greece and in fact, larger than the entire world. They also figured out that the earth revolves around the sun, all right? Which is again, something that people just pretend doesn't exist for another couple thousand years. So two things for astronomy. Sun is larger than 
in Greece. Earth revolves around sun. Pretty straightforward. So again, the sun is bigger than the earth, bigger than Greece, and the earth actually revolves around the sun, not the other way around. Okay. So again, these are ideas that though brought up during the ancient Greek time, they get kind of thrown away until the Middle Ages and the scientific revolution when these ideas get brought back up again in another thousand or so years. The next big thing is math. So in math, there is one particular invention that comes from this time period um, that we still use today. It's one of the few things I remember, and that is the calculation of 3.14159 something, 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 whatever. Um, it's the calculation of pi. And so pi is also a part of the Greek alphabet, in case you're wondering. Um, but its calculation came out of this time as well that we still use today to find the circumference of things, okay? So the calculation for 42 of pi, pi, and then I drew it for you, two little lines with squiggle on top. All right, so the calculation of pi, that 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. I don't know past the nine, if you can't tell. <laughs> All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about under academics is another way of thinking. So it's kind of a philosophy idea, kind of not as well, um, but they are the Stoics, and the Stoics create something called Stoicism. Makes sense. And so basically what the Stoics are and what they believed in, there are people um, who believed that we all should live in harmony with the natural laws that God has established. Uh, basically, instead of trying to dominate the earth, we should just be at one with the earth. That was the idea of Stoics. So people should live in harmony with the earth. So that's Stoic and Stoicism. So the last little thing is art. And I know we kind of already talked about art with architecture and stuff like that. Um, we talked about the golden age of Athens, but during this time period, there was actually two major um, sculptures that came out of this time period. And one of them is called the Colossus of Rhodes. And so what the Colossus of Rhodes is, is basically a giant statue of a man in bronze, totally bronze, about a hundred feet tall. It's very tall, all right? That's a lot taller than me. So about a hundred feet tall, completely bronze man. And it was on the island of Rhodes, which is why it's called the Colossus of Rhodes. So it's a 100 foot tall bronze sculpture. Sadly, however, it did not last very long because of an earthquake that toppled it. However, if you guys look up here, uh, if you can see it, I know the top might be kind of cut off, but um, that's what they believe it would have looked like, this giant, giant bronze dude basically on the island of Rhodes. But the other big thing that came out this time, this isn't your, in your note packets, but I personally think it's one of the most beautiful sculptures, um, and that's of the goddess Nike. And so uh, Nike is the goddess of victory. And so this was actually a uh, um, sculpture done called Winged Victory or Nike of Samothrace. And um, it's basically Nike with her wings riding on a ship. And it's very, very beautiful. I actually took this picture. It's in uh, the Louvre in Paris right now. Um, but it's a very beautiful sculpture and that's completely made out of stone, but you can like see the wrinkles in the fabric. And it's really, really cool and all that kind of stuff kind of came out of that time period. And we'll get more into that type of art when we talk about the Renaissance next semester. All right. So the Hellenistic culture uh, was kind of that last hurrah of the Greek life before, like I said, before Rome started to flourish more and take that power away from them. And that's what we'll be talking about next chapter. All right. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know.